Welcome to Morning Star. I'm Holly Black. With me is Richard Pease. He's manager of the Crux European Special Situations Fund. Hello. Hello. So um, you've probably got a very difficult job at the moment. Tell me, what is it like to be a fund manager uh, in the middle of this pandemic? Well, I'm, I'm sure it's an awful lot nicer working for the NHS. So we feel very lucky in that sense. But I, th I think on a sort of serious note, what we try and do is to look through the crisis and try and see, first of all, in, in very basic terms, which companies can hold their breath and for how long. And then, I suppose, looking further ahead, who can actually benefit uh, from the crisis and take market share and, and uh, sort of prove their business model going forwards. Um, I mean, it, it's quite easy to obviously get very depressed because uh, you see all the nasty headlines. But I think we have to assume that humanity wins and then basically at some stage we get back to some kind of normality. And so if, if, if you do that, I think it's really a question of going through your companies quite carefully, speaking to management as often as you can and just doing sort of sanity checks and see where you are just generally. Um, but I wouldn't say it's sort of business as usual, but essentially we, we, we try and do our best to make sure it's business as usual. And what are those interactions you're having with company management like at the moment? Do they seem quite worried or do they seem quite confident and have, you know, uh, crisis plans in place? I, I've been, just, just in general, I've been quite pleasantly surprised because um, I think one sort of rings up the ones where the stock prices have been hardest hit first. And just to see if you could sort of touch base with what appears to be really going on rather than what the market thinks is going on. And certainly, I've, I've had quite a number of conversations with those sorts of stocks. And on the whole, I mean, I think, I think not that it's relevant, but the first quarter has been quite a good quarter. I mean, good, good companies tend to grow, and the first quarter was essentially a growth quarter. Um, and then, of course, you know, COVID-19 hits you very hard this current quarter. And you know, look, I mean, no one is silly enough to pretend to be completely unaffected, because uh, everyone is affected to some extent. But I think there are you know, there are plans in place. They're doing their very best to, to obviously cut costs, to serve, you know, to, 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 to save cash. Um, and I, I mean, the, the, I think the positive from my point of view is we're not aware of any stocks in our portfolio which actually need to have an embarrassing conversation with the bank, or even worse, to have a very diluted equity issue, which I think is a good starting point. So I know there's a lot going on in the short term and a lot of uncertainty, but as a fund manager, you have to try and keep an eye on the long term. Do you think there are any changes you'll see as a result of this um, or any things that you're thinking about for the future? Well, I, th I think you can ask yourself some sort of rather sort of fundamental questions about how consumers' behaviour might have changed or, uh, longer term and, uh, and if this is accelerated trends. I mean, if you obviously look at a, a, a tough area like bricks and mortar retail, Clearly, if that was in trouble before this crisis, it's obviously got worse as a result of this crisis. And so the sort of death knell is near, I'm afraid, as far as that's concerned, but one would have thought. Um, and then I think, you know, if you, if, you, if you look a bit further ahead, you could possibly worry about inflation risk if governments are helicoptering money into the economy. I mean, that, that's certainly a possible concern. Um, I think at the, at the moment, um, that's a, a, a sort of lesser concern than just a bit of um, practical you know, checks on what's going to happen in the next six months. But I mean, if you take a three-year view, certainly that's probably on the agenda to, to, be, you know, to be looked at. And of course, you're a special situations manager, which means you've kind of got a value focus and looking for maybe unloved companies. Is your job harder at a time when arguably most companies are pretty unloved? Yes, actually, funny enough, it has been quite a, um, quite an interesting mix because the, the big sort of tech platforms have held up pretty well on on the whole. Certainly, the US big tech platforms and the the, the Googles of this world. Um, certainly, some of the, um, the sort of loved uh, growth stocks, the sort of L'Oreal's of this world, have held up pretty well. Um, and I mean, I think I think the irony is that the long-term value destroyers for shareholders like utilities and telcos have actually been a refuge. So it's, you know, in a, in a way, um, they're, they're not obviously cheap. Um, and I think, I, I think some of the stories which we like, which have 
been hit quite hard um, for, for, for various reasons um, actually do look very interesting because they're good long-term stories, but the market's obviously been in a bit of a, 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 a sort of funk because of what's happened in the last couple of months. So, so in a way, you know, the, the valuation and all is still very much there, possibly more so than normal. Richard, thank you so much for your time. For Morningstar, I'm Holly Black.